Have you ever wondered what lies beneath the aircraft carrier's island or flight deck? Or how do they operate? The majority of the control rooms are located below the flight deck because the island was designed to be as small as feasible. The only workplaces in the superstructure are the bridge, chart room, radar, and surveillance systems, and the cockpit control room. What more awaits us? We'll learn in the next couple of minutes. Welcome back to another episode of High Technology. Before we feature on what's under the aircraft carrier's flight deck, join us as we unpack high-end technologies on the planet by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any exciting videos in the future. If this is your first time on this channel, stay tuned until the end for we are about to take a closer look at the aircraft carrier's flight deck. To describe this more clearly, the very back of an aircraft carrier is protruded similarly like a fantail. Fantails are small insectivorous birds of Australasia, Southeast Asia, and the Indian subcontinent. They fly in a very distinctive way with the feathers spread out to help them turn quickly so they can catch insects. The fantail opening has a number of uses. Almost all of the justifications for this enormous hole are encapsulated in it. When anchored far from a pier, it gives a protected space to board the ship and a way to tow cargo behind the ship as it travels. Some of those items are classified, but a barge that was frequently towed was utilized by the pilots as target practice. The jet engine shop is also immediately behind doors in the center right. When they are open, a rail system can be extended so that after an overhaul, engines can be tested at maximum power. In order to fix the four screws propellers, which you can fish off while anchored, it offers divers a diving platform. There are times when sailors fire up the grill and cook, and the fantail makes for fantastic photos of the ship's wake spreading out over calm waters as far as the eye. I can see. The spot locker where potatoes were kept was the compartment beneath the flight deck. However, on certain ships, the same space was the jet engine shop, where jet engines were refurbished and tested because the jet shop sits close to the stern. Pilots used to joke that if they flew too low and boarded an aircraft carrier, they would crash into the pantry. After maintenance, it's convenient to roam around and test engines. The airplane is transported from the hangar to the flight deck by four enormous elevators. Each one has a capacity of two aircraft or roughly 150,000 pounds of equipment. The newer Ford class carriers only have three elevators, which improves the flow of fuel, weapons, and aircraft around the flight and hangar deck. In addition to the four main elevators, there are a number of smaller ordnance elevators scattered throughout the flight deck as a result of lessons learned from the Nimitz class carriers. The hangar bay is only two decks beneath the flight deck. In addition to holding spare jet engines, other heavy machinery, and more than 60 aircraft and fuel tanks, it takes up more than two-thirds of the entire ship's land. It confines them to four areas that are are divided by sliding doors, which serve to prevent the spread of fire in the event of an incident. The flight deck crew has a modest amount of space up top for aircraft, but there is not nearly enough capacity for the 80 to 100 aircraft that are typically stationed on a carrier. The majority of the aircraft are kept safe in the carrier's garage or hangar bay when they are not in use. The hangar is three decks high and is surrounded on both sides by several single deck spaces. At the rear of the hangar bay in the stern of the ship are the shops that belong to the Aircraft Intermediate Maintenance Division, also called as AIMD, in which the constant repairs and testing of aircraft equipment take place. The Aircraft Maintenance Division is responsible for this organizational level maintenance of assigned and transient aircraft. The organization of this division is similar to that of a squadron. The primary function of the Aircraft Intermediate Maintenance Department or AIMD is to perform intermediate level maintenance. It supports station aircraft, tenant squadrons, and special units. Also note that naval aircraft maintenance is divided into three levels, organizational, intermediate, and depot. Organizational maintenance work performed by operating units, such as a squadron, on a day-to-day -day basis. This work consists of inspecting, servicing, lubricating, adjusting, and replacing parts, minor assemblies, and sub-assemblies. Intermediate maintenance work is performed at centrally located facilities such as an AIMD in support of operating units. Depot maintenance is performed at large industrial type facilities such as a Naval Aviation Depot or NADA and includes major overhaul and major repair or modifications of aircraft components and equipment and the manufacture of parts. Starting first with the first department, the supply department is headed by the Senior Supply Corps Officer. The department is responsible for the logistical support of the Naval Air Station and all activities on the station. The supply officer and assistants have the responsibility for issuing all fuel and oils. Their responsibilities extend to issuing aircraft parts and support equipment. The supply department also operates the general mess. 
Moving on to the Public Works Department, it is headed by a civil engineer, corps officer. The officer in this position is responsible for the minor construction, maintenance, and operation of all public works and utilities. This department consists of utilities, maintenance, transportation, engineering, maintenance control, and administrative division. This department is staffed by both naval and civilian personnel. The weapons department, on the other hand, is headed by a weapons officer. The department is responsible for the care, handling, stowage, accountability, issuance of aviation ordnance, ammunition, and pyrotechnics. The department is also responsible for the maintenance of magazines, armories, and the equipment associated with ordnance. Furthermore, the dental department is responsible for the oral health of all stationed military personnel. The senior dental officer performs dental examinations and does other dental work. He or she is assisted by dental officers and dental technicians. Lastly, the medical department, where the medical officer is responsible for all health-related problems on the base. This includes prevention and control of disease and treatment of the sick or injured. He or she is informed of all matters regarding hygiene, sanitation, and epidemics. The medical officer also advises the commanding officer in matters affecting the health and physical fitness of personnel. A flight surgeon, under the direction of the medical officer, takes care of all aviation medicine. The medical department is also responsible for the medical care of dependents of military personnel. The ship's very end houses an area for testing engines outdoors that is accessible via the AIMD stores. Jet engines can only be blasted under the flight deck, where it is both the safest and only location for maintenance teams to do so. Since the repair shops are close by, the aircraft and jet engines are overhauled and tested there. It makes it simple to test it immediately to see if it's functioning properly. One cannot overstate the importance of regularly inspecting the state of airplanes. Numerous lives can be lost as a result of a single act of carelessness. The engines are based on flight miles in addition to the regularly planned maintenance. When a foreign object damages them, they are also examined and corrected. When particles or items are pulled into the engine while it is running, foreign object damage frequently results, harming the aircraft or engine. Due to the limited area of the flight deck and the fast-moving aircraft that land and take off from it, an aircraft carrier flight deck is one of the most hazardous and stressful locations to work. In that little area, it would only take a split second for someone to be propelled off the deck and into the water by a fighter jet engine. The air-capable ship is made up of a number of components. The flag bridge, which serves as the center of command for the admiral in charge of the entire carrier group, is located just below the bridge. Below this are several operational centers, including the launch operations room and the flight deck control. In addition to the flight deck, there is an island on the ship for controlling flight deck operations. The next time you land on an aircraft carrier after a long hour of flight, you know exactly what awaits beneath the deck. What other secrets do you know that lie underneath? Share it with us in the comments down below. That's it for today today's video thank you for watching if you enjoyed this content please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can always get to watch more incredible videos like this this has been high technology serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet until then see you